A lot of you may not know this, but I actually was born in Russia. Это правда, я родился в России и приехал в Америку, когда мне было только шесть лет. Don't nobody understand the words that are coming out of your mouth, man. Be a whoop. I'm a young five-year-old boy in Russia, and my parents tell me that in a couple of weeks, we're about to move to the United States. I can't even comprehend what that means. When you're five, six, your world is like this big. My world was preschool, home, maybe the ice cream store. My parents tell me we're moving to America, it gave me no information about why we're doing it, how long we're doing it for. They told me I'm not allowed to tell anybody because it was a secret. I had no idea why this was. I thought they were playing a game with me, actually. We had only 24 hours of notice to our closest, closest friends to say that we were in fact leaving. Later on, I've come to realize that we came to the United States on a refugee status visa, I guess it would say, like that was our governmental status. We came here to have a better life for our family, for my sister, etc. I vividly remember the flight because it was my first time being on an airplane. I was extremely excited. Also didn't speak English. My parents didn't speak English, but my sister did. So she was like ordering drinks for everybody, even though she, all she was saying was Coke, Pepsi. I was like, okay, that's not really, you don't get credit for knowing how to say brand names. And I remember the flight attendant was so kind to me that she gave me like this little Delta pin that I was like, oh my God, in America, they give pins for free. I don't have to pay you for this. I didn't know if it was a trick. As a kid, you're like new land, new people, don't know what's going on. I'm not gonna trust anybody. But once we landed, I remember my uncle coming to the airport. He gave me like a gift of like Hot Wheels cars. And in Russia, like we didn't have it anything. I'm talking like I might have one color picture of me growing up. There was no fancy technology. There was no toys. Like a good birthday present was markers. And little did I know, markers dry out if you leave them in direct sunlight. I left it inside of a car and I literally was crying because I had no more markers and that was my birthday present. And our cars, by the way, were terrible in Russia. There's like a company called Zhuguli. It was like, ugh. Like if you think whatever car you have now is bad, take like a sledgehammer to the rims, to the windows. <laughs> okay, maybe not that bad, but abuse it for 20 years and that's our brand new version of our car. And then we took the, the car ride over to Brooklyn where we were gonna live and it was during Christmas time. It was like early December that we came. So there was lights everywhere. And I was like, oh my God, there's lights. There's like holiday spirit. It's so beautiful. Looking back at it now, <laughs> like a random neighborhood in like Bay Ridge, Brooklyn that I'm looking at now and I'm like, okay, it just looks fine. Our apartment was only a one bedroom apartment for my dad, my mom, my sister, and me. Our parents' bedroom was the living room. The bedroom was cut in half for me and my sister and the kitchen served as like the little kitchen table that we ate at with four people as well as a computer <laughs> because we needed a computer for my mom to be able to do some work and for my dad to go to medical school for the second time in his life, in his 40s, in a new language. So this apartment was a disaster. The only thing that was great about it actually was that it had an enormously long hallway. Me and my dad ended up getting like a plastic ball and playing soccer in that hallway, like kicking the ball back and forth to see who could score. And the more bounces you got across the walls, the easier it was to score because it was hard to judge where it was going to go. That was good times. By the way, this housing is like welfare housing essentially. It was like rent controlled. I'm pretty sure it was like $400 a month when we first moved in, maybe even $300 a month. Cockroaches galore, mice galore. I was deathly afraid of these mice because my mom was afraid. So I emulated her fear. You could hear the mice running around at night when we would watch television. So I came to the States and I didn't go to school right away. We were planning on sending me to school, I think right after the new year. So I came in the middle of first grade. Going into school when you don't speak the language, teachers asking you questions right away, right? They wanna get to know you. She asked me a question. I say, one of the three words I know. I said, yes, she bought it. She comes in asking me another question. I say the second word that I know. No, she buys it. She asks me another follow-up question. I say, maybe now she realizes this dude does not speak English, I need to find a translator. Luckily, there was two girls in my class, twins, Rita and Rosa, who spoke Russian and English. And they translated, they understood where like I could hang my jacket. I was obviously very stressed out coming to a new school, meeting new people. I cried the first day and the second day and the third day. When our parents came to pick us up, my mom came, the teacher grabbed my mom and was telling her like, your son is crying a lot. I wanna make sure he's okay, this and that. My mom has no idea what she's saying because my mom doesn't speak any English yet. Cry, sad, they're using words, sign language, like anything they can essentially show to each other that I'm upset and they want me to feel better, blah, 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 we figure it out. The one thing I didn't struggle with, even in first grade when I first came over, was math. Because my mom was a math teacher and in Russia, they're like, you better know everything there is to know about math as a six-year-old. I had the knowledge of like a third grader of math, so math was super easy and I could sort of coast on the math component and try really hard on the English and everything else that I was terrible at. And I remember like going to ESL and then my grandparents picking me up from school and then telling my grandma like, I learned a new word. Today. She's like, 
like, what'd you learn? I was like, hot air balloon. She's like, what is that? I'm like, oh, it's a thing that flies in the air. My grandpa actually, and my grandma religiously picked me up from school from grades one to three. After that, they said, you're old enough to cut it in New York City. Good luck as a nine-year-old. And we started walking home as a nine-year-old. Luckily, I lived like one to two blocks away from school. So it was a very short route for me. I had some close friends growing up. Some were Russian, some were not. They all lived in the same vicinity, usually in the same building. We played handball a lot. That was like the number one sport go-to. And then as I started becoming more interested in American culture, I got really into basketball and watching like Michael Jordan and the Bulls play. So I would watch it with my dad and then my dad took me and got me this, it was like a children's ball, but it had the Bulls logo on it. Like I treasured it. It was trash though, it was like a piece of rubber, it like bounced too much. And when you threw it against the rim, it bounced like 50 yards back. But then when I went to go play with the regular kids who've been playing basketball their whole lives and they played with the real basketball, I was terrible because I was like getting used to playing with the five inch ball and now I'm like, with like a legit size 29 and a half inch ball. So that was sort of my childhood initially coming over as an immigrant. A lot of kids teased you. That was kind of the norm when you came from another country. I don't know why it never made me that upset. I think it was because our class was so diverse and so mixed that it seemed like everyone was getting made fun of for something. That just happened to be my thing. Something that also helped, I started doing Taekwondo when I was younger. My parents saved up enough money to literally pay the tuition of the Taekwondo school. That was the max that they could do there. Like, okay, you have one after school activity, it's Taekwondo. We want you to do that. We want you to be in good shape. An activity that I had with my dad to do a little father-son bonding when he had time at night was to go onto the street called 86th Street in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn that had a lot of stores on it and plan out some of the stuff we hoped to buy when we had some money. One of the stores that we used to go to was called Nobody Beats the Wiz. Nobody beats the Wiz. And it was an electronic store that sold boom boxes, televisions, they had like open box sales, whatever. It was basically like the best buy of today, but it wasn't as nice. We were never able to afford anything there, except once we, we did buy an open box boom box, meaning someone bought it, returned it, and it was still open, so we took it. And it was like 200 bucks, and it was like the biggest purchase we ever had. Other stores on that journey that we used to go to that I loved, 99 cent store, our best friend. I'm talking we bought everything at the 99 cent store. Oh, pizza was less than a dollar a slice and like Sal's Pizzeria in Brooklyn was the top for me. Brooklyn pizza, nothing tops it. Sorry, Chicago, wherever else people think that there's good pizza. The cheap 75 cent slice that looks like it has oil like artificially splurged all over it, delicious. Oh, the number one shoe store that like I had all my shoes from, Payless. Boom, loved Payless. If it wasn't for Payless, I would never have new shoes. As you could tell, it was a lot of stores where <laughs> It was uh, humbling, but it's only humbling looking back now because back then I thought Payless Shoes was a dope brand. There's so many more options than what we had in Russia. So like what you have here and you may think is bad could be way better than what we have in other countries. And I think that's sometimes lost in the messaging of my social media content. People think like he's successful. That means he was always successful or he probably comes from a wealthy family. That's furthest from the truth. I had a great family, very supportive family who worked very hard, educated in two countries. There was a lot of work put into that. There was a lot of times where we were on the bottom, bottom, bottom. And in order to get to where we are today, we had to put in a lot of work. And I want you to not lose sight of that because I think the beauty of where we live here in the United States is that opportunity is available for you. You have to be smart. You have to make some wise choices and you may mess up and you may have setbacks. But if you keep working at it, I really think America is the best place for increased opportunities. I mentioned my sister earlier. Well, here's a full video with me and my sister to see how well she knows me. Watch it, it's a blast. She just basically roasts me the whole time. As always, stay happy and healthy. I'll see you on this video though. Ты говоришь по-русски, да? Я тоже.